My name is Andrzej Pejcha. I'm a graduate student at The Ohio State University, and I'm here to report on a recent paper with Todd Thompson and Chris Kochanek, which is entitled The Observed Neutron Star Mass Distribution as a Probe of the Supernova Explosion Mechanism. I'd like to introduce you to some of the basic points that we make in our paper. At the end of the life of a massive star, the degenerate core collapses and launches a shockwave to produce a core collapse supernova. The final mass of the remnant, either a neutron star or a black hole, is the sum of the mass that was enclosed by the shockwave at its birth, the mass that was accreted through the shockwave during the accretion phase, and the mass that fell back during the explosion. The most precise mass measurements of neutron stars come from pulsar timing of double neutron star systems. Present theories argue for a little mass transfer in these systems once the first neutron star was formed, so the masses basically represent the birth masses of the neutron stars. In this work, we present a Bayesian formalism that compares different predictions for the remnant mass function to the double neutron star data. We compare different models using the results of the artificial supernova explosions of Zheng and Woosley for different explosion energies and different progenitor metallicities. Here we show the expected mass distribution of the two components. The recycled pulsar originated from the primary star and has mass Ma, while the companion has mass Mb. In this model, the stars in the original binary were assumed to have a uniform mass ratio, solar metallicity, and no fallback. By comparing these theoretical probability contours to the observed data, shown with filled circles, we can evaluate the relative probability of the different models. Here, we show the relative probability of the models as a function of the explosion energy. We show zero metallicity in the left panel and solar metallicity models in the right panel. High explosion energies are favored because they minimize fallback, thereby reducing the numbers of high mass neutron stars. In all cases, standard binary mass ratio models are strongly favored over independently choosing the stars from the Salpeter IMF. This means that the binarity of the neutron star progenitors has a clear imprint on the double neutron star masses. Since the models of Zheng and Woosley use only two piston positions, we explored whether using other piston positions would yield better results. We took the solar metallicity progenitor models of Woosley et al. and determined mass coordinates that correspond to a range of values of specific entropy. Since models with no fallback are preferred, the mass coordinates within the progenitors are assumed to be the neutron star masses. This figure shows with solid line the relative probability as a function of the entropy of the mass cut leading to the neutron star. We see that there is a clear maximum at an entropy of about 2.8 kb per burial. For many progenitors, this is the entropy at the edge of the iron core. This then limits the amount of time over which the delayed explosion mechanism can act, 200 to 300 milliseconds after bounce for most progenitors. If you'd like to read more about our results and methods, please take a look at our paper, which was posted on the STOPH archive today.